Sup guys, Heat King here, bringing you a discussion video for today regarding The Last of Us 2. Now, if you'd seen my previous video, you would know that uh, I pretty much said we should probably give it a chance because the leaks, you know, there were leaks and we didn't know the full story and it couldn't be all that bad, right? After all, it was Noidog, etc, etc. Oh, how naive I was. Uh, wow. 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 I mean, I've seen so many videos now lately, like in, in the last few days, uh, last few weeks technically, if you want, if we want to really dive into it. And it's only with the release of the game. No, it's with the it's the release. It's with the release of even more leaks. And this is before we even got the ending leaks, man. I mean, right after we got the first leaks, uh, we ended up getting more information regarding all the crap that's going out at Naughty Dog. And that was pretty much the thing that kind of made me cancel my pre-order, which is the whole work environment that they they have there. Uh, the uh, negativity surrounding that studio um the whole situation just really like with how Neil Druckmann's been dealing with when, when it's come to developing this game uh getting rid of Amy and uh Bruce just you know Stalin I believe is how you pronounce his name leaving the company like right after Uncharted 4 like no even I think I, I think right after this game was about to enter produ production so yeah a lot of a lot of like red flags there do you know what I mean and and the whole SJW environment that they started implementing so they could start pandering to to people like that and yeah that, that just kind of made me think okay okay that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't sound like a good working environment and let, let's be honest there's, there's a lot of n not good working environments in other companies but uh, to this extent to the point where 70% of the employees leave like I, I know that's that 70% means 14 people left but still it's not like it was five people that just got up and left. It wasn't like it was ten people that got up and left. Fourteen out of like the twenty what lead developers or just or just normal developers that were there since the beginning got up and left. Like like what what happened to the point that they got up and left, you know what I mean? And then the whole backstory with the leaker and the hacker and that etc etc like pfft, we don't know what's true anymore. And of course Sony and Naughty Dog just being liars pretty much. Like um Pretty much been liars because throughout the entire campaign for the marketing for this game, they said this and that, and it's all it's all it's all bollocks. It's all bollocks. Like where this game's going to be about Alien Joel, it isn't. It's going to honor Alien Joel. It doesn't. You won't you won't have to kill a single dog in this game. Like like and no, it's not a fact you do. Uh, which I really I don't really care about. Like we I've killed plenty of dogs in other games. Do you know what I mean? But uh, when when you say you won't have to in, in, in an interview, and then you do, like, come on, like, why are you lying for? Why are you lying for? Like, <laughs> so then the more leaks came out, and then the ending got leaked, and I think this was the point that, that this is the thing that broke the camel's back. The ending was gonna either make or break this game. It was bad enough with how they kill off Joel in the game, and when you, when you see it, when you actually see it, how he dies. It is ridiculous. The entire build up to it, and then the ending is just worse. It's the cream on top. Like it's, it's one of the worst things I've seen in the video game, especially when you're doing a cliche revenge storyline. Because the whole point about a revenge storyline is that you know you're playing a main character who's been something bad's happened, and you get your revenge, and that does not happen. Okay, anyone sitting down and saying, this game is beautiful, the story is great, the writing is great, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense, the writing is not good, because by, by the time you get through the first half of this game, you're not going to give a crap about the second half, because you play as a different character, and you're playing as Joel's bloody killer. Nobody wants to play as the freaking killer, especially when... Especially when we get their backstory as to why they did it, and... You, and it's like, I, I don't care. I don't give a shit. It's ridiculous. Like, it would have it would have worked. The, the scene is just... Oh, Abby's backstory is just trash. It's trash. Like, at first you're like, okay. 
okay, this could kind of make sense, but then it doesn't. Especially when you find out that her dad is is the surgeon, is the doctor that you killed as Joel at the end of the first game. But, uh... It's such a big fucking retcon, because in the first game you had the choice of whether you wanted to stealth your way through the hospital to get to Ellie, or go on a killing spree. And... This game pretty much confirms, tries basically tries to canonize that, yeah, going the killing spree route, like a mass shooting is the way to do it, like that's what happened, and that's how they tried to recreate it, I guess, and it's just so freaking bad, but then the worst part is when you, when you get Ellie's back, I mean, Abby's backstory for her dad, and it's like, you're supposed to sympathize for this guy, and it doesn't work, they even... I, wa I watched an entire walkthrough of this game, right, and I just went through a lot of the cutscenes trying to see if I could like these characters, and I don't. I don't like these characters. They're terribly written. They're terrible people. And I get maybe that's the point, like, but how do you make a game like this and then, and then be like, well, here you go. You're supposed to hate these people, but why? Why would you make a game like that? The whole purpose when you make a game like this is for us to sort of sympathize and like look past them and feel sorry that they're dying and I don't feel sorry for any of the characters that get killed in this the only time I felt sorry for anyone was 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 the baby like Ellie kills a baby for Christ's sake yeah Ellie kills a child and it's by it's completely by accident she she didn't know you know you kill the pregnant chick and then she's told at the last second by by the dying father like uh you know the guy who's who's the dad <laughs> pregnant and and Ellie just goes and checks like she's horrified and she has a freaking nervous breakdown and that that was a good scene that was actually a good scene because beforehand when I read the spoilers I was like oh Ellie Ellie kills a kid no wonder Abby wants to kill Dino which is like good but no Ellie Ellie had no freaking idea and it's traumatizing and that's probably the one decent scene they did in the game because at least it shows that Ellie isn't a complete freaking monster they've already screwed up her character enough already and then to add that on top of it would have been like oh Oh, just get out of here. But no, they... She's horrified. And then you get the scene with Abby. And it's like... You can't even compare. Because one character, like, doesn't relish in, in the horror she's doing, in the pain. And then the other character's like, screw it. Like, she's enjoying it. Like, she doesn't give two shits. And that's a character you're supposed to care about? I don't care about that character. Especially when... When you get a flashback to the first game, like towards the end of the first game, you see it from the perspective of the Fireflies, and and like I remember thinking, well, well, maybe if they maybe if they try to write it like you know, how how would Abby feel that her dad was gonna kill a kid to get the cure, or what if it was her? And they actually do a scene like this, and instead of doing it in a way where it's like where well, we could sympathise with the character, the like Abby comes in like you know, Marley asks the dad, what if it was your door? And then Abby comes in and she's like. Yeah, if it was me, I would want you to do it, like... And it's like, oh well. There's all the justification you need to hate this character even more. Like, there is no defense there. She doesn't try to defend Ellie. She, try and, she doesn't try to convince her dad not to go through with it. She's like, go ahead, cut open a child. And then we're supposed to give a shit about her when... when, when, when she, why she has to kill Joel. Like, no! I don't care about you. Your dad was an asshole. You're an asshole. Your friends are assholes, they all deserve to freaking die, like... And then I'm forced, and then, well... People are forced to play, I've seen, I've seen reactors on this, and it's sad, it's depressing. You had people who were looking forward to playing this game, and they're depressed and devastated by this fact, like, that you have to kill your father figure. I've seen one guy who literally had a freaking breakdown and didn't continue the game afterwards. He ripped these discs in half and that's it, like... Yeah, you didn't want to. People don't want to go through that. There, there are people who have who are emotionally into this series, who grew up with these characters, and then they're forced to kill the father figure. Like, who who makes a story where you kill off the main character in the first two hours? Like, I thought, oh my god, oh my god, and people are defending this game. I've got I've got a friend who's the who's played this game and he's like and he's defending it. He's play, and he's like, oh yeah, this is this is the story is really great. It's not great, you retard. Pardon for using that word, but I will use it. Retard. You'd have to be a complete fool to sit there, play this, and be like, the story makes it. It doesn't make sense. The characters are unsympathetic. They're they're terrible human beings. 
and, and you're supposed to play as one of them for half the game? Or at least 10 hours? What game have you ever heard where you play as the villain after they've finished, you know, crop stopping the main character to death? Like, tell me. The only time I can think of where you play the villain is Heavy Rain. And maybe recently Devil May Cry 5. And even then, uh, the situation is completely different to how it's done and how it's explored. Because, you know, the main character doesn't get their head smashed in. But this, this is just like... It's like, revenge. Because that's that's the whole theme of this game, revenge. Revenge is bad. And, and this is a message that gets pushed into your head constantly. And it's like, we get it. Revenge is bad. We get it. Revenge is bad. We get it. Revenge is bad. We know. You've been telling us for like 20 hours now. We get it. You don't need to keep reminding us. Revenge is... Shut up. Revenge is bad. Shut the fuck up. And that's what it is. That's what it amounts to. And it's... It's ridiculous. Who sat there? How the hell did Neil sit there and go like, Yeah, this is good. This is good. Yeah. This, this is gonna be the... This is gonna be the best sequel ever. Yeah, revenge. Yeah, that's not cliche at all. That's not cliche at all. Yeah. Smash Joe's head in. <clears throat> Getting his fucking heart and kicks in. Like, what? What? Oh. So, yeah, this this is pretty much just a rant video, basically, at, uh, at this point, like, because that, that's the only thing I can do, especially when you're in a lockdown, that's pretty much all you can do, you can rant. With all this information we have, is there any excuse for us to pretty much rip this game apart the way we are doing? I mean, how many people have seen games that have leaked or watched walkthroughs where they're ripping a game apart? The only time I can think of a game that, uh that I was coming out and people watching the walkthrough for that uh, and it had like a very mixed reception to the point but still you know it, by the end of it like a lot of fans hated it was uh, Resident Evil 6 back in 2009 I remember when the game was like was, was it 2009? Christ no it was like two, 2012 sorry it was 2012 actually like like late 2012 when that game got like was what was being streamed like a week early I was watching the playthrough for that and I was pretty much, it's weird, I was pretty much enjoying what I was seeing. A lot of people were sort of mixed, they were enjoying it, a lot were hating it. And I, I bought the game anyway because I'm, I'm a Resident Evil fan, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to let that stop me, especially when this was the third game in a series of action games. To the point where it was like, okay, you knew what you were getting your hands on, like, you knew what you were getting. Like, you played the two previous games before, you know this was what the game was going to be. Like, if you didn't, then <laughs> really, you, you're the only one at fault. You know, four action, five action, makes sense where it's going, you know, you, you understand what the direction of the game's going to be. And I, I enjoyed it for the most part, that I think the story was bad, like, like, it, well, to be fair, the game has four campaigns. Two of those campaigns, story was, 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 was good. Grace's campaign, you know, that was a revenge campaign, that was great. And the dynamic between uh, two of the other characters was great, and then you had the two other campaigns, and those, like, those, those weren't done really well, uh... Uh, AKA Leon's and Ada's, those those weren't very good story wise, sadly. Uh yeah. It was a fifty fifty game basically. You either hated it or you liked it, but you knew what you you know, to say that you didn't know what you were getting into is ridiculous because if you hadn't played the two previous games then you have no excuse to complain getting this one. Last of Us is different. Last of Us is different because it's not a franchise. It's not a franchise yet. This this sequel being made made it basically like a franchise now at this point because at that point seven years ago it was only one game we never knew if we were going to get a sequel and honestly uh I, I don't think a lot of people wanted a sequel i didn't want i didn't want a sequel to to the to the first game i think i think i think i said i think i said like when i first when i finished the first game i thought like if they do a sequel it should be based on another character and in my opinion it should have been based on bill's character because he was such an interesting character in the first game and he was gay and people didn't care because they didn't shove the sexuality down people's throats. Like you have a lot of people online. You've got the you've got the you've got the people who love this game, and you've got you even got the freaking actors as well calling people bigots or bots, whatever. Well, well, very professional guys, by the way, very professional. I didn't see any of the actors for for the Resident Evil games or any other franchise that gets ripped apart having the actors sit there on Twitter complaining and blaming the fans and calling the fans out because you know I don't I don't think Japanese games do that because they're designed in a way that appeals to everyone 
and it's always mixed, you know, people will either like it and hate it, and you don't have the actors coming on, they're going, oh yeah, yeah, screw the fans, they didn't like our product, ah. Instead, you've got the actors for this game going, oh, look at the bots complaining, oh, the game's good, get it, consume, consume our product, it's great, yeah, yeah, like, keep telling yourself that, keep lying to us, and, and keep pissing the haters off even more, like, you do, you do realise we're not hating on you, this is like, this is like the whole Game of Thrones season 8 situation, except that was sort of handled with respect, and it was handled re with respect, because the haters never complained about the actors, they never complained about the production crew, they never complained about the visuals, everyone loved the, the way, the, you know, everyone loved the actors, and everyone felt bad for them, that they had to, you know, act in such a crappy script for the final season. Nobody blamed the visual effects. People liked the visual effects. Nobody blamed the the car, the, the crew. The crew did their job. The only people who got massive hate were the writers and AKA the showrunners and rightfully so because they wrote the scripts for the final season and they made a mess of it and people went after them rightfully so. No one had anything bad to say about the actors. Okay, it's not their fault. The product was shit. Instead, You've got the actors here trying to defend this game. Why are you defending? Why? Shut the fuck up. Sit behind your fucking little desk. And, and respect the fact that none of us have come forward calling you a bunch of shrooms or loving or dick sucking Neil Cock haters or whatever. Instead, oh, they're, they're, they're siding with Neil. Well done. Well done for doing that. Well done. Because you're pretty much showing where, where your allegiance lie. Do you understand? And I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate seeing that shit. I hate it. I hate, I hate, I hate this, this. I mean, I mean, have you seen the metric score? I get that it's getting bombed. It's getting bombed by negative reviews, but it's also getting bombed by positive reviews because now it's getting to the point where it's like, oh, okay, look at, look at, look at the spectrum compared to that. We need to, we need to throw some positive reviews in there. And I've seen some of the positive reviews that have been bombed. And it's literally the same line of dialogue, but under like a different name. Or it's just a bunch of shit written. There you go, there's your positive review, and it's ridiculous, like, it's ridiculous. I've never seen so much hate for a game in just a few, like, in, in, in just a few days, like, a few hours even when it was released, like, Jesus. Jesus, and, and the people defending this, like, it's like they've never read a good story before, they've never seen a good revenge story before. Like, how can you justify the ending? And it goes through all that crap kills so many people, especially people who had nothing to do with what happened to Joel. And then when she finally has a chance to get her revenge, she lets Abby go. Because revenge is bad, uh, okay? You shouldn't do revenge, okay? Because revenge is bad, okay? Like... What? What? How can you sit there, write an ending like that, and then, like, justify it? Because it's not justified. It's not justified. It's pointless. It makes everything you went through pointless. At least give people uh, something, do you know what I mean, to cling on. Like, nope. Joel gets killed. Jesse gets killed. You know, Jesse, poor, poor Jesse, who seems like the only decent character in the game. And he gets shot like that, and it's never mentioned again. Maybe once, like, oh, I don't want you to go out there and die like, like Joel and Jesse, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, clearly you didn't give a shit about them because you let two, you know, the same person killed two of them. Clearly you didn't like or care enough. Your, your baby father's dead, but, you know, don't, like, oh, I got my baby now. Like, I don't want you to go out and die. I get it, I get it, you don't want any to go out and die, but, but still, you know, the bitch killed your baby father, like. And then... Tommy, Tommy, like, Jesus, he gets treated like shit as well. And he's the only one who actually goes out trying to get revenge the first. It's not, it's not Ellie, it, it's her, it's him. His brother's just been killed, he's the one, he's the first one up and going, like, great. And then what happens to him, he gets shot in the freaking face. Loses an eye. Gets divorced later. Wow. Every male character basically gets treated like shit in this game. And then Ellie gets, gets, gets treated even more like shit. Joel gets killed. Jesse gets killed. Tommy just... Psst, his life goes to shit. Uh, D D Dina's the only one who seems to have some sort of a decent ending and it's because she's got the kid. Ellie goes goes out of her entire way to get revenge. 
kills all of Abby's friends, with the with the with the exception of a uh, of the little racist. Oh, speaking of race, yeah, the racist. Have you all have you all seen Ian Alexandra's Twitter accounts? I don't I don't honestly I don't care. I don't care that it's from like three, four years ago or whatever, but that, that's pretty much around the time this little bitch got hired to be in this game. So obviously Naughty Dog and Neil were pretty much aware of this guy's thoughts. I mean, have you seen the stuff he writes, like his hate for white people and heterosexuals? Have you seen that? Like, how, how, how is that any better than people hating on gay people and black people? Do you know what I mean? Especially with this current climate. And, and you do that, you do that, and you try to like, like people are trying to say, oh, he's just a kid. Like, oh, you know, leave him alone. No, no, I won't leave him, uh, her, him, whatever, alone. He's a, he's a racist. He's a racist. He's clearly been a racist. I don't care if that was from three, four years ago. That's, that's no freak. It's not like James Gunn when he was, when he was on Twitter and making freaking inappropriate jokes. Because Jesus, everyone makes inappropriate jokes, and then people try to hate on people for that like no that's that's clearly a freaking joke people have a dark there are people who have a dark sense of humor i've got a dark sense of freaking humor i've said a lot of fucking weird shit but not to the point where i go on twitter and like uh white people are uh, this or uh, heterosexual people are that uh, i don't do that who the fuck does that unless you know you're a racist in which case and he got hired like it's not it's not it's it's not even a surprise it shouldn't even be a surprise because Neil even said he hired him for his for his gender and stuff so he didn't he didn't hire him for his acting abilities and this game's got a racist in it well done well done Naughty Dog well done we know where you stand we know where you stand now well done because they're clearly not trying to pander to to to, to people like that they're not trying to pander to the people who made them a success in the first place they're trying to pander to to a different crowd and surprisingly uh uh, uh a few majority of 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 of, of the uh, L L G T Q card or L G Q T card. Sorry, a pardon for that. I get mixed up on that. Uh, they're not happy about it. They're not happy about it. I've seen a few posts from people like from from queers, from women. They're not happy about it. They hate it. They hate it. They feel like they've been uh, mistreated or missed. Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, uh, mistreated. Miss. What's the other word for it? misrepresented and they're not happy with it and they shouldn't be they shouldn't they shouldn't be like it. how can you call this a good game how I don't get it. I just I don't get it like I don't get how you can sit there and justify the actions and the writing of this game because it makes no sense it doesn't it doesn't, uh, you know, people, the way Joel is killed, look, we knew, we knew Joel was going to die. Anyone who, who was paying attention to the first teaser, like, the way that was done, it kind of gave up the vibe that, yeah, Joel's probably going to die in this game. And then, and then obviously, like, uh, the whole marketing after that, like, they never really marketed Joel in the game at all, but with that one exception where he appears at the end of a trailer, and he's like, you think I was going to let you do this by yourself? And it, and you think, okay, cool, it's going to be an Alien Joel adventure at some point, but it isn't, because it, that, that whole scene is not in, in, the, in the final product, because it's actually Jesse. They just, they just cropped up Jesse's head and put, it, put Joel's head on it, and you're supposed to think, oh, okay. Like that, that's a lie. That's 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 a bl blatant lie. It's like I don't get how Sony or Naughty Dog are getting are getting away with false advertising. This isn't like Metal Gear Solid uh, 2 where where Kojima was hiding right in throughout the entire game the whole time. It isn't because because I'm pretty sure in one of the trailers later on they actually did reveal Raiden and you know people were like, oh okay, interesting. I wasn't around that time. I was a freaking kid. By the time the game the game came out, it was like what February two thousand and one or something, or was I don't know if I don't know if that was the Jap original Japanese release because I know the game came out much later, in 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 Western countries, and by that point everyone knew you play as a different character. I knew I got I still got the game, being a massive fan of the first one. I still bought the game knowing you play as a different character, and I had no problem with it. I'm one of the large few who likes Raiden in in in, in that game. Like I don't have a problem. With it. I, I think he's a good character. You played Big Boss in the first. That's another example. That's that's an example of a game where you play as the bad guy. M MGS3. You play as a Big Boss. You know before he became Big Boss, and you re you find out why or how this guy. You know this guy who we kept hearing all the games and the, the first two games who was bad, and we play as him. 
and we, we find out, oh, he's, he's not actually a bad guy. Oh, he's a pretty cool guy. And then you get to the end, and you're like, ah, that would make sense why he would, you know, have that mindset and probably go dark. And then you had a bunch of sequels, uh, you know, based on that, showing that progression of his villainy, showing the progression of why, of why he would become a bad guy in the future. And they did such a good job with that. And you could sympathize with that. And uh, you understood why he did what he did. With, with 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 this with this game there is no understanding because um because Joel gets killed in such a shit way like like people are trying to justify this like oh well he he let his guard down you know it's been it's been four years it's been sorry about that it's been four years it's been four years whatever he's living at Jackson you know he's gotten comfortable obviously he's got a different mindset now no that doesn't make any sense because in the first game. In the first game, at the very beginning, when you're playing it, his daughter's still alive. His brother comes to help him. They get in the car. Tommy's driving the car. And, and they get they get into a point where there's people in the road asking for help. And Joel is basically like, forget them, keep on driving. Okay? This guy only cares about his family. He doesn't care about anyone else. He had that mindset since the very beginning. Okay? Which was being a cautious, careful person. And then, and then the game skips 20 years later or whatever. And he's still a cautious, paranoid person now. Like, he's been living in a quarantine zone for how many years? He's got tests now to look after. He's got himself. There you go. He's still a paranoid, cautious person. When, he, when, he, when, he, when, he, when you're with Ellie in the car, does he stop to, to help the hunter guy? No, he drives up and smashes him in, into the freak. He runs him over, basically. Uh, he's about to kill Henry before Ellie stops him and points out, Oh, he's got a kid. Relax. You know, clearly he's not that bad. But he's still very cautious. He's still very angry. He's not. He's not trusting at all. He's never trust in the first game. He's never trusting at all. And then suddenly in this game, oh, he saves Abby's life because why? Why not? And then he agrees to go with her to some to to a place, to to a stranger's place, to a place with, with her friends who you don't know, who you don't know if you can trust, and they're all armed to the teeth. You walk in, see in a room full of armed people. They lock the door. Shit, it's not suspicious at all, is it? It's not suspicious at all, like... What? In the first game, in the first game, when you get to Tommy, they get attacked by a raiders. And and, and, and I believe Tommy even says they, they've been getting attacked a few good weeks, uh, every few weeks, every few months. You know, they get, ra they get raided and they have to defend themselves. So these people are probably never in, in a s safe state of mind. They have to constantly be on the lookout. And suddenly we go to the sequel and all of that's gone. Like, all of that caution has gone to the wind, like, Oh, I'm gonna save this random person I've never met before. Uh, nah, cause I'm a, uh, and then, and then, oh, uh, I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna, I'm, oh, you got a, you got a safe place we can go to, uh, with friends? Uh, okay, uh, let, let's, let's go there. And then he gives out his name, like, correction, Tommy gives out his name, and this is after the beginning of the game, in, in, in the new one, in the very beginning of the game, where Joel tells Tommy what he's done. He tells him what he's done, and he knows he's got an out. You know, he's got a target on his back now because Joel's clearly aware that that shit's not going away. He know, he know, because even in the even at the end of the first game when he kills Marlin, he's like, you know, you know, like no, you, you'll just come after and, and he shoots her dead because obviously, yeah, the, it, it makes sense that if the Fireflies are alive, if there are any survivors or whatever, they're going to come after him. So he's got a target on his back. So why why is he why is he giving his name out? Like, t Tommy knows this, and he gives his name out. Oh, oh, my name's Tommy. This is Joel. Wow. And then we get to the scene when they're in the house. Hi, my name's Tommy. We've got a settle, man. You want to come with us? It's like, hi, I'm Joel. Oh, yeah, you guys act, look like you know me. Like, what? Bang. Boom. Dead. What happened to the character that was logical and smart and cautious and paranoid in the first game? Because this isn't the same character. It's not. It's a completely different character, because the character in the first game wouldn't behave like this. And that's one of the main reasons people are so angry about the way he dies. Because it's such a stupid death scene. It doesn't fit the character that we played and saw and watched in the first game. It doesn't fit at all. Period. At all. And then Ellie. Holy crap what they do with Ellie in this game is, is besides, besides her not getting a wrench because she's a freaking idiot... Her whole character dynamic is just freaking different. Her whole characterization is different. She doesn't act like Ellie from the first game. Ellie in the first game felt a hell of a lot more mature to the Ellie in this game who comes across as a spoiled brat. 
like there's a there's a sequence right where where they're, where they're at the party and this 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 guy who clearly is very fond of uh, homosexuals gets a bit offended. Um, I don't know why that's in the game because um, you know this is what tw twenty four years after normal civilization died. I don't know why you would still give a shit about that kind of mentality in the apocalypse. Surely at this point people would be like. Yep, yeah, people are dying, we're all dying, human race is going extinct, etc, etc, you know, might as well just have, f f like, fun and do what we like and, and not have any problems with racism or, 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 or sexuality, but no, this is clearly a big thing. And then, and then this, this, co this causes some sort of uh, upset between her and Joel to the point where she doesn't want to talk to him anymore, especially when she finds out what he did in, in saving her. Uh, and... And uh, the, ne the next day or day after, whatever, after the party, uh, she, meets th she meets the old guy again and he apologizes. He apologizes to her. He gives her sandwiches and then uh, she, refuses, she refuses to forgive him and calls him a bigot. Bigot sandwiches. I've s I'm sure all of you have seen that because that was such a great scene. Yeah, let's, let's throw that in there. So she doesn't forgive the guy who, who, who hasn't done, who, who's just been a bit offensive and has apologized for his behavior, but she forgives the chick who killed Joel and Jesse and blew out Tommy's eye. Do you understand why the writing is shit and inconsistent? Can you understand that? Can you also understand why Joel, if this was Ellie, if Ellie had been killed like this, savagely by Abby, Joel would not forgive Abby. He would go after and he would kill her. And he wouldn't give a shit. He would beat her to death. And rightfully so. Because that's who Joel's character is. For Christ's sake, he went... <laughs> the, the man went out of his way to save Ellie multiple times in the first game. And by the end, because he had lost so much and finally had regained some sense of his humanity... And I will always say this, the Fireflies are villains. They deserved what they got. They are villains. There's nothing you can say or do that will make me like them. They're, they're pricks. If you pay attention to the notes and the environments that you go through that the Fireflies have been in, you realise how incompetent they are and how they deserve to die. Joel did nothing wrong. And Neil Druckmann, hating his character because he does hate his character. Like, if you read interviews after the game came out, you can clearly tell he's got a very big dis distaste for Joel's character, and this was pretty much his way of like, oh, you like Joel's character, you think he was right, well screw you, he was a villain, he was a villain, and he deserved to die, boom, he's dead, there you go, that's what you do to villains, except he wasn't a villain, yeah, he had a shades of grey in that, but at the end of the day, he was very justified in his actions, this isn't justified, Joel saves Abby's life, and then she returns the favour by, by blowing his kneecap off and smashing his head in, they could have gone, down into a whole number of directions with the story, with the game's plot. They could have done so many different things. And they went for the most cliche approach ever. It wouldn't be a problem if Joel had gotten a good death that lines up with his character and characterization from the first game. Had they done that, it would have made sense. It would have been right, but they didn't. And then you have the audacity to write a shitty ending where pretty much everything we did was pointless. Like, this is Neil Druckmann, and I've seen the memes, guys. The memes are the best thing to come out of this game. And this is basically Neil Druckmann trying to pull off a, a red wedding. And instead, he pulls off the bells. Instead of uh, pulling off something that builds up when you watch it again, on repeat viewings or repeat playthroughs and you realize okay yeah this makes sense this was going to happen instead it's a random thing that just happens and you're like what the fuck just what what and that's all it is it's shock value it's shock value for the sake of shock value for the sake of a twist or whatever you call it there is no true meaning behind it there is no art in it there is no theme it's just shock value that's what it is torture porn great Freaking awesome writing, wow! It's been like 30 minutes now and I've just been ranting on and I don't know man, I don't know, I just I feel like, I feel like shit, like I've not played this game, do you understand? 
I've, I've watched the playthroughs of this and I just don't like what I see. I don't like it. I don't like the storytelling in this. And I've watched plenty of walkthroughs for other games that I ended up buying because I enjoyed what I saw. Do you know what I mean? You, when you, when you know, people will, people will come up with the excuse saying, well, you should play it first before you make up your mind. But what's the point of, of playing it when I already know how it begins and ends? And I don't like what I see in that. I mean, there's nothing in the middle that's that that make that's gonna make me enjoy it. Like, we'll play it for the game, for the gameplay, right? Because you know, there's always two things to it. You know, there's always two sides to a video game, right? Just like there are two movies. You watch a movie because you want to see some good action. You watch a movie because you want to see some good character development. You see a movie because you want to see a cool story, a decent story. You watch it for romance, etc., for horror, for the jump scares, for the visual effects. You know, there's so many different things to like. And a game's sort of the same thing, isn't it? You know, you, you play it because you want to see some cool characters kick ass, you play it for the sexy characters, you play it for the deep themes, or you play it for the, again, for the whole, you play, you play a horror game because you want to get scared, you play it for the action, you play it because you like first person shooters, or cover shooters, etc, etc, you know, there's different things. But the last, the last of us, the first game, was about the story. Technically, it was about the characters. And I, I need to point this out, like, I really do need to point this out. I do still feel like the first game is overrated. I still feel like that. I still think the first game's story is, is predictable cliché. And uh, it, the, the way people loved and hyped that game up to this day, it, it still sort of in, in, in irritates me. Like, it's so overrated. But, but, well, the re you know, whenever I get asked by people, should I play The Last of Us? I'm always, always like, yes, you should. I even brought a friend a copy of uh, 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 the game because they'd never played it before. And I was like, you need to play this because it is good. Like, because as, as, as much as overrated and cliche it is, it's still a decent story that has something to say and to tell. And Joel's character, Ellie's character, their relationship... Their, their development and their growth and their characterization in that game is so well done that it, it's the main reason why you should play it and it's filled with good characters, side characters as well. Bill is a great character. He's a badass, he's got emotion, he's got depth to it. Like, he's, he's just as mistrust, mistrusting and brutal as Joel is and he's just a fun character. What that whole segment with him in the first game is one of the best segments in the game because of his character. Tess is a good female character, okay? She kicks ass, she's got a moment, she's got like a, a sense of humanity there, like, and it was sad, it was sad what happened to her character, it was sad what happened to with Henry and his brother, like, you know, these are characters that come in and you're like, and, 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 and I've said this before in another video, I did say that for me, I predicted everything that would happen in this game because it is predictable. When you, I studied media and I studied television production and uh, and that so and I've done writing, not official writing but writing projects I did. Okay, I read a lot of manga, I read a lot of books, I've seen a lot of movies, I've played a lot of games. When you get to that, when you when you get when, when you when you've done all of that, you get to a certain point where you can pretty much see or predict what's going to happen in any given story. Especially if the story is written good to the point where you're like you can predict what's gonna, like, you know, it's, it, like I said, The Red Wedding, for example, if, if you've read the books for that, you can see all the hints at how it's gonna lead up to that, and when you watch the show, the first three seasons anyway, and pay attention, you can see from season two and pretty much majority of season three how it's gonna lead up to that event. So it shouldn't come as a surprise when it happens. And in this case, one could make the argument, okay, well, that's it's good writing then, right, in the first game, but no, the, the writing in the first game just felt, felt cliche. It, it was more of a case of, like, oh, what's going to happen here, and more like, like, oh, don't tell me they're going to do this, and this is what's going to happen, and it's like, that's that's pretty much what happened, and it's like, ugh, like, okay, fair enough, whatever. At least the characters were still good, and it's more of a, it's more of a piss take case of, I enjoyed these characters so much that I wish they were still there from beginning to end, okay, because that's how well... They develop them to the point that you grow to care for them and like them. Last of Us 2 is different. I don't, I, you know, I've seen other people praise it and they're like, oh, this is good, it's real written. But, like, I don't understand how you could like any of the characters in this game because they're, they're just full of themselves. You've got, you've got, you've got Abby's boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Abby's pregnant girlfriend's boyfriend 
who who cheats on her and we get this ridiculous sex scene like it's ridiculous that Sony annoyed uh, Sony allowed this to 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 be through like you see tits and everything and it's disgusting it's it's hands down one of the worst things I've seen in my life like uh, ugh. mom's awake ugh. horrible horrible ah uh, but they don't censor that they don't censor that but they do censor other games Especially Japanese games when they've got like bot shots or whatever, they censor the shit out of that when it comes to the European countries, or whatever. But they won't censor this. Like, do you understand the hypocrisy of this? It's ridiculous. So you've got that. You've got you've got you've got the cheating boyfriend. Maybe maybe they're maybe they're in a, in a free way relationship and they don't care. I don't know. You've got the pregnant uh, girlfriend. You know who's who's a medic, by the way, and they let her go out into the field, which makes no freaking sense. She's pregnant. She's their doctor. Let's go. Let's let her out. And go in the field. You. Why? How dumb do you have to be to do that? Uh, you've got the guy that looks like Neil Druckmann, who's a, who's actually facial captured by someone else. But I'm pretty sure Neil Druckmann must have motion captured him because it's just too much of a coincidence that the dude looks like him and and spits on Joel's body like that with the disrespect there. He gets shot randomly. Boom, dead. Just like Jesse. Boom, dead. There's not enough time to feel sorry for these characters. They suck. They're just not good written characters. They're cliches. They're walking cliches. Do you get that? They're, they're red shirts who are just there to die. When these characters are introduced, that's all they are. They're just there as a plot device for Ellie to get to point A to point B. Boom, dead. Boom, dead. Boom. Oh shit, I didn't, I didn't know you were pregnant. Oh my god. Dead. And that goddamn ending, that goddamn ending, it just ruins everything. It does. It ruins everything. You go for all of that and then you don't kill her. Because. Because. And Abby gets to live happily ever after with her, with her, with, with her, little, with her little boyfriend. You know, the character that's supposed to be trans and isn't actually trans. It's, it's, a, it's a chick. This is the best part, by the way. This is the best part. Like, this is the best. This is honestly, this is the best written character in the game. It's a little girl whose sister is a soldier, right? In in in, in this cult. But the little girl uh, is the, the girl basically. The younger sister is basically going to be forced to marry one of the elders, and the mom is forcing that. And the, and the and the younger sister doesn't want that. The younger sister wants to wants to be like her older sister and wants to be a soldier, right? She hates she hates that that she has to. And so she shaves her head off to be more like a man, to be a boy, basically. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because they're trying to throw this sort of uh, identity gender storyline into this, but it makes no sense because, first of all, this is a girl. This is a female character who's trying to make herself look like a boy because she wants to be like her sister, not her brother. Which would have made more sense if they were trying to go for that. Her sister. So this isn't a case of, uh, oh, oh, uh, girls have to do this and men have to do that. This, the older sister is a soldier, despite, despite her being a woman. Okay? The younger sister hasn't been, it, it, it isn't chosen to, it, do you know what I mean? It, 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 to say, oh, she's, she's chosen to, be, to, to, marry this, uh, to marry the older because she's, she's a girl. Well, yeah, but for her to shave off her head and to be more like a boy, so that would make her a soldier. That doesn't make. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, it, it's ridiculous. It's 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 stupid. If 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 the character's sibling had been an older brother, then it would have made more sense because it's a case of I wish I'd been born a man instead, so I could be more like my older brother. Instead, it's her sister. Do you understand? It's her sister. It doesn't make sense for her to like be. I want to shave my head to be more like my sister, not my brother. My. Do you understand where the plot and the writing clashes? Do you understand why it doesn't make any fucking goddamn sense? Do you? And 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 yeah, we got that pointless. And that, 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 that by the way, that's the character played by the racist actor. By the way, Ian Alexandra. Look them up. Look them up. And, and and tell me if 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 that shit is justified. I don't care if it was from re from three years ago, or whatever. Like it's not justified, whatever. 
And seriously, the goddamn ending, like, it just, if you, it, it, it pisses me off. It pisses me off. You go through all of that not to get your revenge. Abby gets to live happily ever after with her, with her new boyfriend and goes to the Fireflies. And Ellie, Ellie loses everything. She loses her two fingers because it gets bitten off. And now she can't play the guitar. Oh my god, look how bad revenge is. Dina and the child have left her. Oh my god, look how bad revenge is. Ah. But Ellie didn't get her revenge. She saved Abby's life. She let her go in the end. And Ellie loses everything, regardless. How, how is that... How does that ending make sense? How? How? No, seriously, how? I hate this. I hate sitting here and, and ranting on this on this and, and acting like, oh yeah, it, you know, it, 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 it's the thing to do now, but like, I don't like doing this. I don't like sitting here in front of a camera and talking for 40 bloody fucking minutes and complaining about a game that we waited seven years to play, only to find out that it's a pile of shit. I think I might have I might have gone off topic a bit because I I, I was I was supposed to talk about the gameplay right you know when you've got the story and the characters etc etc I did go off about that and uh, you know one of the reasons is well you haven't played the game you've seen the story you don't like it play the game maybe the game will you you'll like the gameplay right no I I won't like the gameplay because from what I've seen from what I've seen there is no improvement to the gameplay from the first game it's the same game. Except now they've added like, oh, you can crawl now. Wow, that's that's amazing. They've added a jump button that's basically useless that you will hardly use, and you're just doing the same thing over and over again, going from point A with uh, NPC characters just talking constantly until you get to the first to the next action segment. You know, stealth kill, boom, done. Stealth kill, boom, done. More talking, more exploring empty environments. Stealth kill, boom, done. Stealth kill, cutscene. Kill, cutscene, kill, cutscene, explore. It's, and it's just, what, 20, 25 hours of just that. And that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Uh, there's no improvements. It's the same game. It's the same game. It's uh, there's no jumping off point. It's seven years later, and they haven't re redefined it anything. And uh, the game also gives you an option to cheat. Basically, you know, it gives you this option to change the entire difficulty setting to the point where the AI is still shit. Basically, like I think I think the AI is shit regardless, even on the normal difficulty setting. If you decide to play for it, just like in the first game, like where you could just where your NPC character could just run around uh, the enemy characters and they wouldn't react until they see you. And it's kind of like, I think it's similar to this, like they haven't fixed that. Except now now you could basically be right in front of an enemy character as you're on the ground crouching or crawling and they wouldn't see you. But that's just, I don't know, like, that's just such a ridiculous thing to add to a game because uh, they, they did that to panda to blind people, I think, to deaf people, blind people. Does it? No, it, it wouldn't make sense to do it for, for, could it? Maybe, obviously, visual, so, yeah. But, yeah, good, good, you know, amazing. Am amazing that they uh, appeal to that. It's a good, good of Naughty Dog to implement something where blind people can play it too. Too bad they couldn't, uh, you know, design it in a way where, you know, certain people who, who, have, who have emotional disabilities won't lose their shit when they end up getting to the scene where Joel gets his head smashed in or, or, or the ending because uh, people like that are going to fucking lose it. I've already seen one guy on, 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 on uh, online lose, lo lose it and basically cry and hate the game, like, done. Like, people are going to be pissed. I've seen, I've seen posts, I've seen posts of people like what the game means for them and it's actually really sad. It's depressing. Like, like, the first game meant a lot for a lot of people. Like, you got one guy who, who, who lost his daughter, for Christ's sake. You got another guy who lost his dad, and, 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 and playing the first game meant something for them. And now they're going to play this, and uh, they're going to be forced to kill Joel, the father figure. They're going to be forced to beat the shit out of Ellie, their daughter figure. Like, and then, and then we get to play as Ellie again and get our revenge. I mean, we don't. We don't get our revenge, like... Because, uh... You know, Neil, Neil Druckmann has a hard-on for torture porn. 
because he has a hard on for killing off Joel because he never liked Joel in the first place. This is a guy who uh, who thinks way too highly of himself. He's very egotistical, and this is a guy who's also what friends or liked the writing that uh, the two showrunners did for Game of Thrones. You know, he's got the freaking he's got one of the freaking books in the game for Christ's sake. That, that's how much he's a fan of them. That that should have been that should have been warning signs right there and there. Um, this is a guy who who got to the top by by working on the backs of others and pushing them down instead. I mean, this guy's the reason that uh, Amy, you know, the 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 the, the creator, like the writer of Uncharted of the Uncharted of the first three Uncharted series, left. Bruce left. God knows why he left. Like he. From well, an interview we saw, he it sounded like he was looking forward to uh, working on a new project after Uncharted 4, and it suddenly he's gone because you know new directions. No, it it clearly sounded like the fact that we haven't heard from them too, and uh, them praising uh, Last of Us 2 or whatever, like just silence, just just tells me everything I need to know. Like that, that, that these guys obviously don't don't like him. They don't like Neil Druckmann. They don't like his direction. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, that's good. Just keep silent. You don't need to say anything. You know, your silence is enough of an answer. But the fact that this idiot was allowed to write this and that the upper upper echelon, whatever, were like, yeah, this is acceptable. Like, let's kill off our main character who was the most marketable thing that people loved about the first game. Let's kill him off. And pander to the SW days and feminists who are now pissed off as well because they're not actually happy. Uh, uh, they're not happy. With the way this game's done, because you <sighs> fans of the first game are unhappy. Ellie fans are unhappy. Joel fans are unhappy. No one likes Abby. No one likes Abby because if you do like Abby, there's something wrong with you. Seriously, there is because this character is so unlikable. They try so hard to make you like this character, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because they did it in such a way where you don't give a shit. Maybe, maybe if we had started the game as playing as Abby first, and then building up to to Joel, like maybe maybe she wants revenge for someone we don't know who, and you keep playing, you keep playing, and you start getting hints like, oh, she's a firefly, oh shit, and then you get you play, you play, you meet Ellie or you or you meet Joel and you befriend them. She doesn't know who 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 did what, you know. She just she's just investigating and trying to find out who the killer is, and then eventually, you know, she discovers it's 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 him. And then, you know, she has to make the choice of whether she wants to kill this guy who's been helping her the whole time or not. And then this will cause a conflict between her and Ellie, whatever. And then, I don't know, maybe Joel goes out a hero, whatever. Maybe he, he, he dies saving her life again or Ellie's life, whatever. They could have done, they could have gone in so many directions to explore what Joel did in the first game in, in a positive way. In, in a way where it's like, maybe he regrets his actions in that. And, um... Or he, or he could have chosen a different path instead of just murdering everyone left and right. Or whatever, but no, it's just, let's, let's just kill him off, like, to first two hours in, let's kill him off. You get flashbacks, okay, don't get, don't get me, you do get, don't get me wrong, you do get flashbacks with Joel and Eddie when they're younger, like, right after the first game. And, and, and those are great. Those are actually probably the best part of the game, but that doesn't justify sitting down and playing a 25-hour game where the last half is playing as a character you're gonna hate and despise and no matter what they do you're not gonna like because there's just no way you're gonna sympathize with a character who just killed off a, 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 the character that you love most it doesn't work like that this isn't Metal Gear Solid 2 this isn't Halo 2 this isn't freaking uh, I don't know how many other games you have where you play multiple characters and like there isn't there isn't there isn't a game like that uh, where you play as the hero and the villain you have to kill each like, I don't think at least I don't think there is like, like I said, Heavy Rain maybe, but that, that's more like a twist because that's more of a serial killer who did it kind of game. So you, you're sort of playing that and trying to figure out who the killer is and then big fucking surprise, like, oh, uh, Devil May Cry 5, uh, does that count? Devil May Cry 4, where, where you play as, uh, as, as, as Nero and you're fighting Virgil, you know, you think he's the villain, but then you get to the halfway point and you find out, Oh, no, uh, no, he was justified in what he did. No, he's actually the hero. Okay, let's join forces and team up. They did that. Um, Devil May Cry 5, where you, where you do actually play as, a, as, as the guy who's actually revealed to be, the main, to be the main villain of the game. And again, it's not done in such a cookie-cutter way. Like, you, you do sympathize with the character, and it's awesome to see Virgil back as well. So, you know, that was, that was cool. That was done in a cool way. 
This, this isn't done in a cool way at all. This is just done for the sake of shock value. The fact that Naughty Dog did not let the reviewers even talk about the second half of the game. They're not even, you know, if, if you didn't have to mention that you play as Abby, fair enough, but the clues were there. You play a different character from the posters to the uh, trailer that we go with Abby. Like, it's, it's pretty freaking obvious. But the fact that you couldn't even talk about the second half, like, that, that, that just screams uh, red flags again. Like, they knew that people would hate this direction. But what did you expect? You kill off the main character of the first game in the first two fucking hours. What did you expect the reception was going to be? Oh, the first game was about love. Well, this game is about hate. Well done, Neil. Well done. You must be very fucking happy and proud of yourself. You made a game that people hate. And those that love it are idiots. Okay? I don't, I don't care. If you like the game, you're an idiot. Okay? You're one of those people who, who watches everything, who plays everything, and are like, This is good. This is good. This is good, and it's because of people like you that trash gets made every single time because you just consume it all and you never bitch or complain about it. Because you don't sit there for five seconds, for five minutes, ten minutes, and think about, <coughs> wait a minute, this makes no fucking sense. Holy shit, people are right, this is actually really badly written. Oh my god. Well, at least the visuals are good. The voice acting's good, the motion performances are good, the sex isn't, but everything else is good. The gameplay, I mean, it's same old, same old, nothing new really. Oh well. But the story's shit. And rightfully so. Do I agree with people who uh, review bombing this game? Yes and no. They, they, should, uh, they should review bomb this game, but they should be, you know, they shouldn't just give it fucking zero, zero, zeros. That makes no fucking sense. The game still looks roughly good. The game's got good voice acting. It's visually entertaining. The story is shit though. Take five points off for that, definitely. Because in the end of the day, you're mainly buying this game for the story. And if the story is bad, then yeah, it deserves to be ripped apart. But not, but you know, giving it just zeros on that. No, that's a bit unfair. Give it a four or five. And yeah, that's fair enough. Like, because everything else is cool. It's just that the story is shit. And it's going to make it an unplayable game if the story's crap. Because at the end of the day, you paid money to see where the story goes. You waited seven years and this is what they do. Anyone, anyone who justifies Joel's death in this game after waiting seven years to play it is a fucking idiot and a cocksucker as far as I'm concerned. Because that's just not justified. That's just not right. That's just, that's, that's, that's disgusting. Okay, that's just bad. That's just... Anyway, that's the end of my rant. How's your day been going? I hope it's been going better than mine. Like and subscribe. Whatever.